notes of the dead in a separate head of the old beggar? Yes, the scroll with the spell. I remember that. I had it in one of the books. Alright, so this is basically turning that off and on. It's a huge piece of crystal. It's powered by magic fire, and at night it gives off a bright light. Who's this? Mom! I know we don't get along, but I still love you. This book is so big that it could hide at least 100 scrolls in it, but I don't carry the scroll, which means the scroll isn't there. It's a huge old canopy bed. It's a cool place. I could turn it into a ship or a fortress. I just need imagination and more pillows. The scroll is around here. I need to look more carefully. The scroll is carefully folded in a book that I brought home from school. I knew I'd find it. Sweet. Grandfather's old garden, and behind it in the distance is our capital. Recently, the decade has begun, and all of Croistham is under a fog. Even the tower can barely be seen. So how do I move over here? Oh, I can just drag and slide it this way. Okay. Kyle and I stole the skull out of the herbalist's shop. The old man didn't notice that it was missing from the shelf. He took the skull to school, put it on a stake, and threw a black scarf around it. The girl screamed like crazy when a skeleton suddenly appeared in the hallway wearing a black cloak. Professor Cortnix was furious when he found out about our joke. Alright, so we can do this. Oliver looks in the drawer and finds three gold coins in the corner. Now that's surprising. I wonder if I can look around for gold. Would I find more? Alright. Stack of small, gray, half rotted papers with sorcery symbols. Notes of the dead. Take those. Old lady's severed head. Kyle said he found the beggar already dead from the decade near the school and cut off her head. Small vial with some red powder that looks like dirty sand. It's just a throwing blade for 20 copper pieces. Okay, so it looks like we're done in here. Go outside. No, I'll stay in my room for now. I need to complete the damn ritual. My father taught me to always finish what I started, never do anything halfway. Father, I miss you. When will you be back? Alright, so let's see what we can do here. Uh. Scroll with the description of the ritual. Okay, let's see. From the distant past, an ancient enemy people knew... No, that's not it. Here it is. To summon a Vargal, you need three things. A corpse head, notes of the dead, and a magical powder. Which you will use to revive the dead. First, glue the notes on the chin and forehead of the dead. This is the first step of the rite, but unimportant. Then, grab the magic powder. You need to pour the mixture into its dead eyes. Now that the mind is sealed, the dead lips are shut, and the eyes are obscured by a red mist, the dark spirit awakens. Seems like an allegory. Okay. Head of the old woman. Maybe Kyle is right, and all these stories about Vargals are just stupid tales. I need to check. How I, do I begin the ritual? Pretty sure that I know what to do. I can start. Something's not right. I wonder if this is dangerous. Alright, so we're performing a ritual. Um, Oliver pours the powder over the eyes. A bang is heard and the powder erupts into a light blue flame. I guess I didn't do it in the order. No, no, no. Right. Oliver glues the note on the forehead, but they fall off, making a rustling sound. In a flash, the head looks like it did before. 
Because I need to start the ritual. Okay, so what am I missing? Uh... Glue the note to the chin. Oliver glues the note on the chin of the dead head. In the forehead of the deceased, Oliver glues the note onto the forehead of the dead head. Uh, and then I think we can just do the... Are you kidding me? I think I just didn't do it like this, right? And then this on the eyes. And then pour the mixture onto the eyes of the dead and deceased. Oliver pours the powder onto the dead head's eyes and it is quickly absorbed into the skin. And what about the dark spirit that's supposed to immediately awake? <laughs> We have ourselves a Vargoyle. Arg! Oh yeah! Oh shit! Oh shit! I'm a genius. I summoned it. Kyle will die of envy when he finds out. Arg! Hey, shut up, evil head. I'm your master now. Arg! Aha! Hey! Hey, quiet! No, this thing wants to eat me. I need to do something quickly. I should try a spell or something. Once my grandfather taught me to defend myself from the dead, I have to just remember the spell. Rawr, rawr, whispering, stepping quietly. I walk around your body with the white chalk. The Vargal throws itself at Oliver and bites onto his hand. The ah, monster, let go! Let me go! Ma! Oliver, struggling, gets up. Damn, Vargo, brute. I have to come up with something quick as soon as possible. Oliver tries to escape, but the Vargo catches him and beats his shoulders. Oliver feels like he's about to lose consciousness. Mom, forgive me, Mom. Mom, I'm dying. I'm gonna die like this. Now, where was the phone? After raised blood handprints can be seen on the doors. It looks like someone has already tried to get out of the room, but failed. The lamp looks like it's been burning for thousands of years. All of the glass inside is covered in dust. Through the red mist that fills the room, the skull seems so sinister. In its eye socket, you can barely see yellow dots shimmering. Or is it a mirage? I should look closer. Wow, here's a whole seven gold. A large crimson moon looks down from the heaven at the transformed garden. The trees are life leafless, and the branches seem to be made of dark glass and twinkle in the wind. I see strange creatures on the branches, grotesque birds, bats, and small corpses with big heads and rags. Not mother, I'm scared. My books, what happened? They've been transformed. The inscriptions on the spine have turned into a frightening wounds of some, some unknown language. One of the books that my father gave me have, have changed. Alright, well, I don't know if, what I have for options here. Um, Oliver barely makes a step toward the exit, and the Vargo abruptly moves to the door, blocking the way. Better not try to run out of the room. That won't end well. And I have to call Kyle, maybe he knows something. Okay, how do I call this? My, my buddy here. The Vargo floats in the air, looking in all directions. He's calm, but even if I just start... Okay, we'll just save it here then. No, don't quit. 
How am I supposed to call my buddy here? Ah, uh, here we go. The phone keeps ringing. Kyle, see something. Answer. Answer, damn it. Come on, come on. What is that, you? Hey. Kyle, I summoned the Varcoil. What, what, buddy? That's cool. I just thought of something. Let's put it in Emily's bag tomorrow. When she opens it, the Varcoil will fly out. Kyle, you're an idiot. She wants to eat me. What should I do? What should I do? What? Not good, buddy. Looks like you didn't tame it, and it wants to kill you. Look in the scroll. There should be something about taming a Varcoil. Alright, so that's how I use my cell phone, apparently. Okay, let's get this thing on here and inspect. Oliver notices that one of the corners in the scroll is carefully folded. Here it is. It's written how to tame a Varcoil. Righteousness, enter thy body, O Leviathan, to sleep the eternal slumber of peace. The evil, escaping the scaffold, enter thy body, O Leviathan, as punishment. And those souls, forever unhappy, suffering and wandering, looks for deliverance from their sorrow that oppress them in life and oblivion. Ab appearance of demons and sorcerers, the cunning dark liars, tempt those souls and entice them. Happiness obtainable only in death, and the deceased will bow down to them. Look for deliverance from their sorrow? I have to call Kyle again, maybe he'll know something. Okay, so let's use my phone. Kyle, hello, I found something in the scroll here. Forever unhappy, suffering souls, let's see. Look for deliverance from their sorrow in life and oblivion. So only someone who died suffering can become our Vargo? I think that is how has I think that it has to do with that, buddy. There's more aberrants, etc. Tempt souls and entice them with happiness, and the deceased will bow down to them. Kyle, I understand. I probably need to promise that Vargo something she wanted when she died, but but she died for a decade. Kyle, I can't promise her that she, she, there won't be another decade. What should I do? She will eat me, Kyle. Whimpers. Oliver. Oliver, are you still there? Yes, I lied. See about the head. Remember I said I found it near the dead beggar's house? Really, it didn't happen that way. What? How? I saw how the woman died. I saw how they killed her. I'll send you a picture. It might help you somehow. The picture was sent to Oliver's phone. Oh my good heavens. I need to examine the picture and see what made the old woman unhappy. It is definitely... Those noble vermin are beating up the old lady on the busy street just for fun and the people just watch. You see she's suffered from apathy of people in her life from when she was dying. Did she suffer even more? Something else looks important. Something I missed. People are crowding around. They're just looking at her as the, arist as the aristocrats make fun of the old woman. Some people are taking pictures on their phone. No one is helping her. Something else still looks important I missed. She hides her face from the blows. It's a horrible scene. My heart sinks when I see such things. Why didn't anyone want her to ease her suffering? Wasn't anyone afraid of angering the aristocrats? There isn't anything interesting left to see in this picture. I need to talk to the Vargo. I have to be correct or she'll kill me. The Vargo hovers in the air, staring at Oliver with evil dead eyes. Whispering. What made you so unhappy? People in the street didn't help you, right? The Vargoyle stares silently at Oliver. You were alone. Many years you suffered alone in this world of apathy. I don't know if you had children. Maybe they deserted you and your life became more empty and hapless. I'll help you, do you hear? Now you'll never be alone. I promise to be with you always. I swear, do you hear? I swear! A green aura surrounds the demon momentarily, and over its forehead, golden moons quickly flash and disappear. Oh, hey, hey, hey. turn off the light, my eyes are watering. Unbelievable, it worked. Oh, 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 Master, you are amazing. You are wonderful and charming. You, I don't have words to tell you how thrilled I am to be with you. 
Looks like the Vargo thinks I'm its master. Is it permanent? Can't believe it. A real Vargo? Now I have my own personal demon. Think about it. Oh, wait, I'm so cool. Name. Your wonderful name, my master. I hunger to hear it. What shall I call you? Don't even believe it's true. That means I can choose my own name. I'll just go with Oliver. I am Oliver. Oliver Bertrand. You can just call me Oliver. Oh, Ollie, Oliver. Oliver. I will repeat that name before I sleep, Master. By the way, if you wish to know my name, it's Edna. What do you desire, Oliver? I'll summon in honor of my sudden meeting. Tell us your story. Tell me about yourself. What were you before? Before my miraculous rebirth? Oh, you really wish to know? Then allow me to waste some of your precious time. Like I said, my name is Edna. Many years ago, long before you blessed the earth with your presence, I was born into this world. My father, Felbud, had a grocery store on the outskirts of Crustham. He was a horrible man, I tell you. In one world, wild, my lord, wild. He drank like a boar. He drank like a boar. He drank how he drank. He would get drank, laid down all over, blue collared, and moaned, and I, a little girl, would put on shoes and run to the shore with a bucket. I would take water to him. That's how I met Joe. I dropped the bucket in the water and he fished it out from his boat. He gave me the bucket. What a good person he was. Who was Joel? My husband. Father accepted the marriage. Joel was a uh, carvenier and lived well. In the dead season, we returned to cross him. The rest of the time, we traveled here and there. We traveled and traded, but we couldn't have buy happiness or health either. Joel caught a fever, got all yellow, and died after two weeks. What happened after that, Edna? After that, everything went to hell, Oliver. What could I have done? I wasn't educated, couldn't trade. My boss took over the caravan, I took my son and returned across him. By that time, my father had died from drinking or disease. I'm not sure. The house was empty and boarded up. I lived there until... Until what? I don't want to remember it, my lord. I would gladly cook those noble bastards in a boiling pot if my dear lord would let me. Can you? Wow. What else can you do? Oh, a lot. A lot more. How about a curse, my lord? A family curse or maybe a murder? Uh, sure, why not? Yeah, let's kill a moron, I know. He never leaves me alone. Whatever you say, my lord, and how many pieces shall we tear this jerk up into? Confidently whispering. If you want to know my opinion, then I say we should put him in a oven and toast him like a gross. That's it, Groth. Just wait. Tomorrow they'll find your remains throughout the whole city. Err, master, I wait your orders. Maybe I shouldn't. Groth is a pig, but killing him would be too extreme, wouldn't it? Alright, well this is where we're going to end the video, and uh, we'll have to make a decision. Should we kill him or not? We'll find out in the next episode. Thanks for watching.